for with God nothing shall be impossible very very instructive statement for with God nothing shall be impossible that means without God outside of God outside of his contribution there are many things that may not be possible and this this is already a message for someone because respectfully speaking we live in a generation and a context that um, for some reason because of the advancement in technology advancement in science and and which which has been very profitable sometimes we tend to just push God out or take God as an extra luggage you know but the Bible clearly tells us here that for with God nothing shall be impossible that means if we want to activate possibilities in our lives uh, it is imperative that God becomes the principal factor in our lives praise the name of the Lord very very important the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 11 Daniel chapter 11 let's go to verse 32 Daniel 11 the B part is my part of emphasis but I'll read everything he said and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their God it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits they shall be strong and they shall do exploits I, I want to um, share with us the principles that govern results because we're talking about activating possibilities in our lives and I have taught it let me maybe just reiterate I've taught it again and again that results are not the reason why we seek God we do not love him and serve him and seek him just because we want results finances maybe children prosperity advancement in career these things are very important but the principal reason why we serve God is because we love him it's an honor for us to serve him and it remains an honor so it it's important that as we explore this sensitive topic I just make it plain that the pursuit of God has nothing to do with what he will give us it is it is our response to his love we seek him because we passionately love him and if we do not get this right then every other thing will be wrong it will be built on a wrong foundation however the Bible also lets us know that God is benevolent enough to pay attention to our needs that whilst we serve him sincerely he desires that our lives become reflections of his love because the very character of love according to John 3 16 is that it gives for God so loved the world that he gave so every time there is genuine love there is giving he will let us experience his fullness and then the Bible also tells us that we have been made to be partakers of his divine nature and if that is true then there should be experiences captured in our lives that attest to the fact that we truly are in experience partakers of his divine nature so whether they come as prosperity they come as healing they come as speed they come as restoration every act of god manifested in the life of the believer these things are tokens of his love they buttress on the fact that he loves us and so i i believe that god wants to prosper us by the grace of god i am very outspoken about the whole counsel of god I believe that the believers experience is fullest when we open up to all the dimensions that are captured in God it we shouldn't just embrace the love of God and then negate other dimensions in the dealings of God that can profit us praise the Lord and so we're going to be examining some of the principles that really help us govern results because when we talk about possibilities and exploits in the kingdom we've established the fact that God himself is willing to give this to us in fact let's look at Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 and verse 11 Romans 5 and verse 11 17 I meant to say Romans 5 please give us verse 17 it says for if by one man's offense Paul is teaching the church in Rome now death reign by one he said much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of or which is the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ so the Bible tells us very clearly here that because we have received the abundance of grace 
uh, which reflects as the gift of righteousness and by it he says we reign in life revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 tells us very clearly john was caught in the isle of patmos and when he heard the worship that was going on in heaven the bible says and has made us unto our god kings and priests and he says we shall reign on the earth so the earth is our jurisdiction of dominion and it is the will of god that we reign we walk in dominion we walk in power but these things happen by principles again i'll go back to a scripture that has become an anthem to my life um psalms 82 psalms 82 and we we'll begin to read from verse 5. he says they know not so the psalmist is now talking telling us why in spite of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ in spite of all the provisions that have been made for the believer why are we not able to maximize our lives our destinies in christ to the fullest and he's attempting by the spirit to proffer solution and he starts by addressing the issue of ignorance he says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness he says and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high seven says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes hosea lamented in chapter 4 and verse 6 hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet began to speak and he was speaking by the spirit and he said my people you know every time i read this scripture i'm amazed that the first two words are my people not strangers my people those who are the object of my love the object of my spiritual investment but then he says they are destroyed for lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge that means knowledge must be accepted because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee and thou shalt be no priest to me seeing that thou has forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children knowledge knowledge believers please hear me <clears throat> the bridge between the prophetic desire of God for our lives and their experiential manifestation is knowledge. We need to understand that the love of God as powerful as it is does not automatic, uh, automatically guarantee the, the manifestation of his word. This is, this is something I must emphasize. I think I should say it again. That the love of God does not automatically guarantee that we will experience the fullness of of everything that he has in store for us we have a role to engage through knowledge the keys of the kingdom matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching now and he's introducing the disciples and all who were under his teaching to a very powerful kingdom concept and he said he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you joshua selman to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them he says it is not given that means that the mysteries of the kingdom represent the compendium the body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the victory of the saints the saints will not just rise in light automatically the saints will not just rise to become ambassadors in experience automatically now many believers are well-meaning we go to church we love god we pray we even study the bible respectfully speaking from a religious standpoint but many are unable to experience the fullness of god because we do not understand the systemic nature of the operation of the kingdom that it takes more than desire it takes more than a well-meaning heart in fact you hear people say i'm a nice person i've not offended anyone why is life treating me this way uh, it does not just happen because of sincerity of heart we must be able to understand the ways of god take note of that the ways of god the methodologies of the kingdom and i call them mysteries that the mysteries of the kingdom represent the body of knowledge allocated for the saints these are the keys of the kingdom by which saints the saints command dominion it's important that we understand these are the principles that 
produce results in the life of the believer so you can have two believers who love god born again filled with the holy spirit but the possibilities that they command do not necessarily depend on the election of grace with a few exceptions it doesn't necessarily depend on location geography and all of these things the moment we have access to the word of god and then we engage it with understanding fishing out of it by the spirit the keys are located for our victory then when we are careful to engage these keys inevitably our lives will begin to change to reflect what the word of god said so we're going to examine i will just take maybe one of the keys for this session uh, they are the laws of the kingdom and i just want to share with us the keys that will help us to activate divine possibilities the first that we'll look at by the grace of god is called the law of faith the law of faith if you're writing please write that down the law of faith this is the first kingdom key kingdom mystery that uh, is allocated for activating divine possibilities in the life of the believer faith is very important repeatedly through scripture the bible tells us that the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith the just one who has been justified but he will still need the faith of god to live by numbers 23 please and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 very powerful scripture it says god is not a man now this is a very powerful scripture god became a man but god is not a man very very important god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent that means he is that accurate he does not need to correct what he has said had he said and shall he not do it powerful scripture or had he spoken and shall he not make good look at that scripture carefully it says god is not a man that he should lie that means you can trust him not the son of man that he should repent he says have he said and shall he not do it or have he spoken and shall he not make it good this is very powerful that means god is dependable that means you can trust god you can take his word as currency and transact superior business in the realm of the spirit purchasing for yourself possibilities that are not affordable by the strength of the flesh so when you find individuals commanding dimensions of results that the currency they have used to purchase these possibilities is the speakings of god the bible calls it the logos the word of god john 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word the logos of god it says and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things all things new heritage baptist church all things finance all things children all things restoration all things the breakthrough that you need all things the career that you need it says all things were made manufactured so understand where all things come from the possibilities that we are trying to talk about in this conference are possibilities that already exist in the world they are only manifested in our lives they are not manifested in heaven these are realities that already exist our finances our jobs so what we call a miracle in the earth realm is simply a system of transfer from the realm of the spirit that that reality is already in existence very powerful so for the woman who is trusting god for the fruit of the womb the child is not going to jump and just manifest it's already a reality waiting to be transported for one who is trusting god for increase in finances trusting god for healing trusting god for breakthrough and favor these things all things were made by him we're dealing with the law of faith now we cannot talk about faith until we understand the operation of the word of god all things not some things all things were made by him so my tomorrow is already in the world it's not going to come by the chronos the passage of time i rest in the fact that my tomorrow is already made 
this is the day that the lord has made not will make has made is new to me but not new to him this is the day the lord has made so it says all things were made by him then it says without him remember our initial scripture that means outside of him was not anything made that was made listen believers that means if you ever see anything manifest that is good it came as a derivative of not just scripture the letter logos that was printed by zondervan or white taker house no this is not what we're talking about we mean the speakings of god that came from the lips of the logos of god himself all things all things all things if i were you i would begin to write a list of whatever represents all things so that i i need to convince myself all things my lifting all things my exploits in ministry all things my safety even in the midst of the pandemic all things all things made by him all things made not brought by him not delivered by him if all things were only delivered by him then he is not god whoever makes is god he says i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help then he says my help cometh from the lord the maker god is not only a healer god is not only a restorer he is a maker and when you you want to understand the concept of making you have to go to the kitchen when you tell someone make me bread or make me venison that means combine factors create something that was not there manifest in that way let us make man if god made man can he not make any other thing the zenith of his creation the heavens and the earth were made man was made the bread that he eats was made the, the devil that oppresses man was also made there was nothing that was not made when you understand the making power of the word doubt leaves you because for many of us the challenge most times is we know that the word of god can deliver results but we do not we we hope that the word of god can only transport results from where it has only already been made i'll give you an instance if you are looking for a job it's easy to believe that i can get a job because you have there is a vacancy physical vacancy somewhere so your trust is not that god should create space your trust is that god should connect you but god is saying i'm not just a connector to possibilities i can make a way where there is no way that means it is not your business whether the reality exists in the earth realm or not if it does not exist i am everything i can make a door i can provide whatever it is my help cometh from the lord please let's go back to john 1 and verse 3 very instructive scripture all things we're dealing with the law of faith now that faith is predicated upon a revelation if faith is not just action faith is not just speaking you see the mistake we make in the body of christ is that we always like to act alone we always like to speak alone the foundation of faith is a revelation conviction that stems upon the fact that god is almighty and that god can be trusted that's why i took that scripture in numbers god cleared the air over his integrity once and for all so that we are not in doubt because you see many times satan will lie to us you will use our situations to paint god wrong and the moment you are in doubt of god's fatherhood and faithfulness you cannot trust him you see if i if i tell you to come and collect say a thousand dollars or a thousand naira from me you will have to trust whether i have the integrity enough to do that for you if you are in doubt of that integrity you will also be in doubt of your fortitude for reception so this is very important all things were made by him so if god tells me joshua selman you are blessed you will be the head and not the tail i don't need to find out where the head is i don't need to find out how i will get there my first assignment is to believe that the speaker of this truth has the power to make all things all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so everything is made results are made breakthroughs are made liftings are made possibilities are made hallelujah so this is very important if you're writing i want you to write this down number one is you will have to take risks of faith to succeed in life it is a law 
we live in a world where we are very risk averse we do not want to fail we hate failure we hate being purported as failures and so we are we are very we are, we are excessively careful to a fault it is the reason why we cannot do many things there are people today who cannot start businesses because they are afraid of failure they were in a world of guarantees we are obsessed with guarantees the bank will not give you loan for instance until they have a system of guarantee most people will want give me a guarantee that i will arrive safely from my trip give me a guarantee that the journey i'm about to start is not a risky one the 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 the, the risk that you will have to take in life is the risk of faith the fearful i wrote down here and the cowardly never become great those who are fearful in life those who are cowardly never become great in fact when you read joshua chapter one it was uh, on the first seven verses of joshua chapter one was the lord exhorting joshua he said moses my servant is dead then he began to admonish joshua joshua i know that you have never treaded this path before you have never led a stiff neck and a stubborn people like this i know that there are many things that you anticipate that will happen to you but then he told him be strong and of good courage the fearful the cowardly never become great it will take us trusting God even at times like this there are people who have lost jobs as a result of the pandemic there are people who have lost opportunities businesses have foiled up several things have gone wrong in the lives of people and right now people are perplexed they are they are full of fear they are wondering uh, what next there are already prophecies that you know insinuate disasters of some sort coming in the future and people are afraid but it says only be thou strong and very courageous so the law of faith mandates that will be prepared to take risks to take risks in life john 11 and verse 40 Shalapo jesus said to her saith i not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe believe agree with me take me serious take me as true thou shouldest see the glory of God the glory of God is the full weight of everything that makes him God the entire span of the essence of who he is his goodness his love his power that if you want to see the favor the goodness the power the the glory of God you will have to believe you have to take God seriously you have to pledge your life and say Lord I believe you I understand what you have said so let me walk you through the equation of faith new heritage baptist church just to open us up to uh, the character of faith and the way that faith works and there is no other person who will guide us in understanding the subject of faith like the patriarch abraham himself it is very very important i think it was isaiah 51 let, let me turn there myself uh, um, isaiah 51 we'll read from verse 1 and 2 isaiah 51 we're discussing the law of faith now the law of faith hearken to me all ye that follow after righteousness ye that seek the lord look unto the rock whence ye were hewn and to the hole of the pit whence ye were digged verse 2 look unto abraham your father now let me explain this scripture look unto means observe go back like a student studying the notes of a lecturer the bible says the things that are written at four times it says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so the bible says understudy abraham your father the word father there is the originator of this system i'm about to deal with faith and i have used a man to personify this system understudy abraham your father he says and unto sarah that bear you he says for i called him alone and i blessed him and i increased him that means follow his path buttressing on this paul in hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 tells us 
to follow them he says the them here are abraham your father sarah your mother and all who have followed them he says okay he says so after he had patiently endured abraham now he obtained the promise obtained the promise he obtained it so we're going to just look very quickly um how god started with abraham let's go to genesis chapter 12 very quickly i trust that the lord is blessing you with this moment of profound exposition genesis chapter 12 now the lord said unto abraham now notice this was an idol worshiper who came from all of the chaldeans and now and theologically speaking you would when you read from verse 11 you will find out that the first person god spoke to was not abraham the first person god spoke to was terah his father god called the father and for some reason uh, things did not work out for him he did not seem to comply and now we get to 12 verse 1 and the lord said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you now this year i don't know about you but this for me is the spelling of risk get out verse one again please get out of your country number one and then when you are in your country don't keep in touch with your kindred and then number three leave your father's house i don't know the name of whoever obeys this kind of instruction but when you leave your relatives when you leave your family both spiritual and physical when you leave your country you are almost a fugitive and a vagabond and now he says leave to a land no name that i will show you lord how do i know when i arrive there what is the name of that land at least give me a clue and if you obey me verse 2 this is what follows i will when he was saying this it was not yet a reality in abraham's life i will make of thee a great nation hallelujah i will bless thee i will make thy name great i wish i had time for us to walk this that you are not great until your name is also great he says oh lord our god how excellent is your name and thou shalt be a blessing verse 3 it says i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall all families all the families of the earth be blessed be blessed genesis chapter 15 goodness genesis chapter 15 we're exploring the patriarch abraham as a way and a guide to understand the law of faith we're going to read the first six verses genesis 15 after these things he said the word of the lord came unto abraham in a vision remember faith always starts with the word of the lord faith does not just start with our pain alone faith does not just start with the awareness of our limitations faith the process of faith starts when the word of the lord comes he says the word of the lord came unto abraham in a vision saying fear not abraham i am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward verse 2 he says and abraham said lord god what will thou give me seeing that i go childless so this is a man trusting god for uh, a child trusting god for an opportunity that produces continuity and the steward of my house is this eliezer of damascus and abraham said behold to me thou hast not given no seed huh? to me thou hast given no capital to me thou hast given no destiny helper to me thou hast not provided what becomes an advantage a basis for security of my tomorrow he says and lo one born in my house is my heir that means no one within i cannot boast of saying i have someone who can represent my tomorrow verse 4 and behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be thy heir this is a prophetic word already for someone 
someone is already beginning to create alternatives to say lord it looks like you will not do what you have said so maybe let me begin to consider lesser alternatives and god is saying no what i said to you five years ago i'm still saying it now i have not changed my mind i said i will bless you i have not changed my mind i said i will lift you i have not changed my mind he says this shall not be your heir look how look how nice abraham was understand what is happening he is saying god since for some reason you have not found me worthy use somebody in my house at least to have a child lord since it looks like i can never become blessed by myself bless somebody and make the person at least consider me and god said no that which i told you that you will be the voice in your family that which i told you that you will be a man of god you will not just listen to the messages of other men of god tomorrow someone will also be listening to the counsel of god upon your lips he says this shall not be thine heir but that shall come forth from thy own bowels shall be thy heir very powerful i think please go back to verse 4 right where you are in one minute if you can just say a word of prayer and say lord i believe you i'm sorry for attempting to want to create alternatives you told me i will prosper in lagos i came to lagos you told me i should come to new heritage baptist church but as it is now we're in 2020 uh and it looks like where well, this is august the eighth month and it looks like nothing is already showing forth in my life and i'm already giving you options to say lord it looks like you will not bless me someone needs to pray and tell god in this conference my faith is fired up lord i return back to that which you told me i believe you i believe you i believe you the person who will bless me you have told me that my children will feed me you have told me you will not leave me in shame but as it is none of my children have jobs and it looks like shame and reproach is all that i'm seeing and i'm about to even pray i was about to pray that you will use my neighbor or you will use my relatives to at least bless me but now you are speaking to me that by the law of faith i must return back to believe you that you are able that you are able that it will come from me i don't have to outsource it from somewhere else very very powerful thank you jesus hallelujah verse 5 and he brought him forth abroad and said look now unto heaven abraham now and tell the stars count the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be verse 6 the character of faith and he abraham who the bible has mandated that we understudy the bible says abraham believed god to believe means to perceive as true to believe means to agree that you are truthful to agree to attest to your integrity and to your ability that's what it means to believe i am convicted number one about your integrity and number two i am convicted about your ability when you say you believe a thing or you believe god you are attesting to two attributes number one integrity number two ability please understand this while dissecting faith there can never be the manifestation of faith when there is no conviction about integrity and ability integrity is the quality of faithfulness the quality of truthfulness that god is not a man that he should lie not the son of man so if god says i will bless you i will make your name great when you consider what he has said as true that means you have faith you believe his integrity but when you know that the word makes all things you now believe in his ability most people believe in god's integrity but they do not believe in his ability others believe in his ability god can do it but they do not believe in his integrity will god do it so faith listen please listen listen please listen to me people of god when you want to manifest faith you must trust god through scripture to have an encounter that produces conviction over god's integrity comes from the word integer sameness unbendableness faithfulness trustworthiness god's integrity and number two god's ability god's ability integrity he said it he can do it he will do it 
ability it is within his power to ward off all the forces that can negate that word from manifesting this is very powerful pray again where you are seated or watching or following and say lord grant me grace i know that something is wrong with my trusting your ability i have lived in a world where people have failed me people have said one thing today and then turned to do the other tomorrow and because of that i i am already beginning to doubt the potency of of god you have spoken great things concerning your zion and now it's like my faith is failing but lord bring me back to that position even in this conference and through this word where i understand that your name is not only the mighty god you are not only el shaddai you are also faithful and true 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 king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god i worship you King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Lamb of God, I worship you. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. John spoke about the rider upon the horse and he said his name is Faithful and True. Faithful and True. But I know whom I have believed, he said, and I am persuaded, persuaded regardless of what i see regardless of what i hear i am persuaded mm. hallelujah abraham believed god he was convicted about god's integrity and convicted about god's ability convicted about god's integrity convicted about god's ability now watch this the way faith works is that god was fair enough to leave a compendium of his deeds with men it would be wrong for god to just arbitrarily ask us to trust him no you don't ask people to trust you arbitrarily no 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 you can you can you can dare people to take the risk but then if you want people to trust you you must be able to give people um a, a little compendium of what you have done before who trusted you that you did not fail so genesis to revelation the logos of god is a compendium of the dealings of god with people listen this bible is full of several people let's go to hebrews 11 we are we are about to cross examine whether this god is worthy of our trust whether this god has the ability now faith is paul says the substance of things hoped for the evidence the tangibility of the things not seen it says for by it the elders whoever they were great men patriarchs men who lived before us many of them who understudied abraham many of them who walked with god even before abraham the bible says they all obtained a good report verse 3 it says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed starting point that the worlds were framed by the word of god here it is again so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear verse 4 by faith the bible says abel offered unto god a more excellent sacrifice than cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gift and by it he being dead yet speaketh five by faith the bible says my god enoch was translated by faith the business was translated 
by faith the ministry was translated so that what should have happened does not happen by faith it says and he was not found because god had translated him if god can translate a man he can translate a family he can translate a business he can translate a condition he said for before his trans his translation he had this testimony that he pleased god six he says but without faith it is impossible now we're talking of possibilities now the first time in hebrews the bible is talking of impossibility that it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to god here is the rule that when you come to god you must come believing number one that he is the word he is there means he exists he's real then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him hmm. he is the rewarder of the men and women of god that seek him he is the rewarder of those who need his hand that seek him the law of faith now every result in the kingdom please understand this every result in the kingdom is governed by conditions if you're writing write conditions and underline it i'll tell you why many believers do not see the outstretched arm of god even though they keep speaking and confessing but the bible is like a treasure or a gold mine a treasure place the spirit of god leads you to relevant scriptures stories parables now watch this generally speaking this bible contains three things understand this i, I want to break it down now this bible contains three things number one it contains promises the bible contains promises the things that god vowed that he would do number two the bible contains prophecies number three the bible contains principles so every time i study the bible i am looking for three things one i am looking for principles two i am looking for promises three i am looking for prophecies so when we read the bible we're not just reading the bible like a novel that we're reading just for education and enlightenment alone i am searching what has god said concerning me jeremiah 29 and verse 11 i know the thoughts that i think towards you joshua selman said the lord i know the thoughts that i think towards you new heritage baptist church saith the lord it says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so i know that god is thinking about me that's the first information it is a blessing to know that god is thinking about me then number two it is good to know that whatever he's thinking are thoughts of peace you see there are people who think about you but they might not be thoughts of peace and he says a terrorist for instance can be thinking about a nation and the thoughts are not thoughts of peace he's thinking but to destroy an arm robber can be thinking about a family but the thoughts are not thoughts of peace so the bible is saying that god is thinking and his thoughts are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so i begin to search by the spirit open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things out of thy law you see so I, I need to find out the principle allocated for kingdom wealth and the favor of God. I need to find out the principle allocated for excelling in ministry. I need to find out the principle that are allocated for raising children properly. I need to find out the principle for restoration of anything lost. I need to find out the principle allocated for dominion upon the earth. My assignment, listen very carefully, my assignment is to know that every dimension of possibility in the kingdom is governed by a discovery of the principles connected to it wishing and hoping is another way to endorse delay eternally just wishing one day god will bless me one day i will be wealthy one day i will be a great man of god doing so much for the kingdom 
It's wonderful to be hopeful because hope maketh not ashamed. But hope remaining as hope will only lead to frustration. It must be backed up by actions of faith. Praise the Lord. This is very powerful. So I, the, the way we manifest faith in the kingdom is number one, we become students of scripture and students whose ears are inclined to the words of the Lord. It says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. It says, do not let them depart from out of thy mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Then it says, they are life to those who find them. A finder is also a searcher. You have to search the scripture. Many believers are lazy. And I'm trusting that by this teaching, God will conquer from us that inertia, that spiritual laziness, that laxity to stand up and search. Lord, what have you said about my children? Lord, what have you said about my life? What have you said about my job? Listen, when God has not spoken about your situation, there is no hope. Hope only comes when God speaks. Most times, we spend time discussing our problems with people who cannot help us. It may be a boss in office. It may be friends and relatives, as well-meaning as they are. It may be maybe family members. It, it may be all kinds of well-wishers. But I am proposing to you, New Heritage Baptist Church, and the body of Christ, and, and all the believers that, that are following and will follow. Listen. The moment you find out you are trusting God for dimensions of results in whatever area, your first assignment is to go to God through his word. And the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by his word. God appears to people not just by visionary encounters alone. He appears to people by his word. The Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the lord by his word you will hear in scripture that on the fifth day of the sixth month of this the word of the lord came so i find out god's word concerning my health and wholeness i find out god's word concerning my protection and let me challenge you it is very very important go online for instance gather scriptures that talk about healing gather scriptures that talk about prosperity gather scriptures that talk about your well-being i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord for in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord i will follow you lord hallelujah i will follow you lord for in your presence there is life everlasting i will follow you lord i will rest in you lord god is speaking to someone i will rest in you lord Stop all the running around. It's time to rest. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will rest in you, Lord. I will call upon you, Lord. He says, who is worthy of praise? I will call upon you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will call upon you, Lord. I will rest in you, Lord. I will trust you, my God. 
so i find it that this is god speaking concerning my life joshua selman you will be great i will make your name great and i look at it and nothing around my life may be showing that result but then i understand that god is a maker he's not only a maker of heaven and earth he's a maker of ministries he's the maker of destinies i allow myself to meditate now please listen very important joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 the recipe that the lord gave joshua for success that the book of the law the book that contains principles the book that contains promises the book that contains prophecies shall not depart from out of thy mouth remember it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks it says but thou shalt meditate during day and night that means be consistent that thou mayest observe we're coming there shortly so i meditate upon the word i meditate upon the promises do you know what meditation does meditation creates conviction when you meditate upon the word of god the holy spirit begins to breathe upon that scripture and brings out the life and the power of that scripture so that you are persuaded beyond you are persuaded beyond um bending you know that god is going to do this now the holy ghost also shows you the role please please pay attention the Holy Ghost also shows you the role that you have to play in actualizing that promise. Principles lead us to receive promises. Please understand. It is not just the awareness of a promise alone. There are principles. So I give you an instance. If you are trusting God to give you, um, say, direction, or let's say to grant you access to favor now you study the word of god and you find out for instance that favor is important that it is favor that helps men to rise in life you go to exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians the bible says and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty so when i see emptiness in my life i know that the diagnosis is that the favor of god has not been activated in my life but then the awareness of it does not mean i have a solution now how do i get favor even in the sight of egyptians because egyptians do not like israelites historically speaking not necessarily now but as within the context of the bible the israelites were slaves in egypt and yet god said under a particular condition i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty so i begin to search the scripture what is the law that makes for favor what is the principle that i will obey i look at things like psalm 102 verse 13 it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon your zion for the time so i know that favor has a lot to do with timing the time to favor her yea the set time is come you see that now so i begin to pray lord i thank you i'm meditating on the word of god and the spirit of god tells me okay let me use an entity that receives favor to teach you how favor works he takes me to the book of esther and now i begin to study how a little girl from shushan hadassah came to a point of prominence never used a sword to fight anyone yet she killed the greatest the act enemy of the people of god what principles did she apply the holy ghost now for instance begins to teach me that there are ways to activate favor i'm showing you how faith works ah when you are valuable it makes people to desire you when you practice honor it makes people to desire you when you understand relationships it helps to bring favor you can pray your way also to favor you see i am he's showing me the role that i have to play now many believers are not attentive to their role they are only attentive to god's role they know what god should do but they do not know what they should do their participatory role 
when you act on scripture you are not negating the finished work of christ it is your participatory role in making that which is finished manifest i repeat when you act upon scripture you are not negating the finished work of christ your action of obedience is your participatory role to make that which was finished in christ to be manifest in your life here and now this is where many believers fail we do not act the bible clearly says there is he that scattereth and tender to poverty there is he that withholdeth more than his meat i mean there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty and yet you will find people who are greedy wanting god to bless them you will find people who have no passion for the house of god wanting god to bless them you will find people who ignore and neglect diligence wanting god to bless them what are the areas that you are trusting god for a miracle what are the areas in your life, precious people of God, that you're trusting God to activate supernatural possibilities? I may be talking to a man of God, a woman of God who is trusting God. You're saying, Apostle, you may not know what is happening to me in ministry. I'm down. Ministry is not working. I love God with all my heart. I serve Him, but I don't seem to see the outstretched arm of God. It may be a mother who is watching. It may be a father who is saying, will God visit my family? Can He visit my children? I'm tired of negative things happening around my life. Until you are willing to take responsibility, the light will never shine blaming people for your condition blaming the government for your condition now i know that here and there there may be legitimate grounds upon which you may say okay my father my brother my uncle somebody who would have helped me but listen to me i say this especially to africans nigerians i say this to believers until you are willing to take responsibility over your results you will never that sense of entitlement that makes it look like someone somewhere should succeed and come and bless you it will only lead to frustration as a man of god you must take responsibility and say look if my ministry is not working it is not because there are too many churches in my city if my ministry is not working it is not because um, maybe there is some kind of tribal sentiments no take responsibility there may be a dimension of grace and fire and knowledge that i do not know and you contend for it in the spirit of faith very very important so you must find out the end of meditation is understanding and understanding is only complete when you find out your role your participatory role in causing the work that god had finished in christ to be made manifest in your life please try to understand this abraham did not just sit down god beckoned on him follow me and the bible says abraham got up and began to walk he got to a point where god beckoned on him abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest even at the risk of being controversial even at the risk of being looked upon do you know what it means to sacrifice your child i don't know the extent of wickedness that that would be that a man would carry his young son of about 12 years old take him to a mountain and go and butcher him simply you would see that as selfishness and yet he was able to take that risk to prove to god that he trusted him and god swore and said in blessing i will bless you you read that in hebrews chapter uh, uh, romans chapter 4 when he began to talk about the 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 faith of abraham that abraham conceived i think we should go there as i prepare to round up romans chapter 4 please mm. hallelujah romans chapter 4 we'll read verse 1 and 2 then for time's sake i will rush to verse um i will rush to verse verse 12 and 13 and then we'll just look at a few things and see the character of faith it says what shall we say then that abraham as our father as pertaining to the flesh had found that means he's showing us now how abraham obtained the promise verse 3 for what saith okay verse 3 let's go to verse 3 for what saith the scripture listen carefully abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness for time's sake i want us to go to verse 16 verse 16 very quickly the bible says therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace 
to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that which is of the faith of abraham who is the father of us all 17 as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations the maker is speaking again i have made thee the father of many nations before whom he believed even god who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were look at the character of faith now verse 18 the bible says who against hope so do not think abraham just believed god because it was convenient there were things around him that negated the speakings of god but the bible says who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according not to his desire according to that which was spoken what was spoken so shall thy seed be 19 it says and be not weak in faith he considered not so the character of faith is that once you find what god has said and you find your role do not consider what the limitations are it says he was about a hundred years old neither yet considered the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not the bible says at the promise of god through unbelief remember i spoke about the integrity of god staggering not at the promise of god through unbelief it says but was strong in faith giving glory to god hallelujah and being fully persuaded fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able are you seeing now just leave it there so we see that he was persuaded at god's integrity and now he's persuaded in god's ability integrity ability god do you love me enough to do it yes god do you have power enough to do it yes on this basis i believe you show me what role i have to play and god says this is now your role joshua selman this is now your role new heritage baptist church a b c d and when you find it you obtain grace from god to walk in keeping with that which he has given you and the bible says inevitably if that becomes true for you then your result is guaranteed blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her there shall be a performance not unto them unto her who believe unto new heritage baptist church who believe there shall be a performance of the things that were spoken of the mouth of god when he came to mary the bible says he met mary brought glad tidings sent an angel gabriel came and met mary and began to bring a very controversial salutation called a woman who was highly favored and mary looked and wondered what manner of salutation was this and she began to tell mary that she would have seed that would not come from a mortal man and mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and then he says the power of the highest shall come overshadow you at the end of it mary said be it unto me this is where we're going to be praying i just established our first prayer point be it unto me according to thy word be it unto my finances according to thy word be it unto ministry according to thy word be it unto family not according to the economy not according to the times the economy has its own template the times have their own template but be it unto me according to thy word i want you to lift up your voice wherever you are and begin to pray and talk to the lord sincerely new heritage baptist church we are praying be it unto me pray the prayer of mary and abraham believed god he was persuaded about god's integrity he was persuaded about god's ability listen two of them are important you can be persuaded in god's integrity he does not lie he does not fail but that's not enough to give you results you may be persuaded about god's ability alone you need both a revelation of the shorty of his integrity and his ability we are praying grant me grace to know that you are a god of integrity grant me grace 
to know that you are a God who does not fail in our world today that is full of disappointments in our world today that is full of disappointed expectations grant me grace to know that you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent that if your mouth utters it and if you appear to me through your word giving me promises showing me principles revealing prophecies to me then i can trust you i can take you for your word we're praying thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus mighty god of heaven we believe you for new heritage baptist church we believe you for this mighty assembly we thank you for the things that you have spoken this year through the mouth of your servant we thank you for the great things that you have in store for your zion for their spiritual growth for their transformation for their families for their finances for their relevance for their lives for their health we thank you bring us all oh god to a point of persuasion unbendedness hallelujah we are going to pray father open my eyes to see the promise the principle and the prophecy allocated for birthing my possibility now two people can have the same need but the scripture that god will use to bail them out will be different two women can be trusting god for the fruit of the womb Two women can be trusting God to lift their families. For one, God will give a scripture. You need a specific prophetic word. A specific scripture that reveals to you what God wants to do. Say, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. We are praying. Lord, open my eyes. Reveal to me by the agency of the Spirit. Show me, appear to me via your word. Let me see the promise allocated for the area of concern in my life. If my marriage is not working, Lord, show me the scripture. If my health is not working, show me your word. If my destiny is stagnated, show me your word. He sent forth his word, the Bible says, and his word healed them and delivered them. You are praying from the depth of your heart. You are taking personal responsibility for your life. Take personal responsibility for your home, your family, your finances, your ministry. Take personal responsibility for your spiritual growth. Don't blame your pastor and say, uh, for instance, Oh, um, um, I, I, my pastor did not come to counsel me or give me time. That's why I'm not growing spiritually. That's not true. Don't blame your parents and say, Just because my parents uh, did not manifest the level of responsibility I would have wanted. That's why. No, take responsibility. Lord, open my eyes to see. Don't say it's because God has refused to anoint me. That's why I've not risen as a great man of God. These are very, very well-meaning excuses, but not they are, they are not legitimate excuses. Pray, Lord, grant me grace. I take responsibility over my destiny. And in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, the Son of the living God, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, that I find through searching, I find through prayer, I find through the labor dimension of the word of God. I pray and ask the Lord to open my eyes. Let me find the principles allocated for my lifting. Let me find the principles allocated for my favor, the scriptures. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now that you know this thing, it says happy are you if you do them listen to me it is not just hearing the word that produces results it is not just knowing what god has said you must obtain grace to do the grace does not exempt you from doing the grace empowers you to do this is i think a, a bit of a balance that must be brought because most people think that all that the grace of god does is to exempt you from doing there are actions that are actions of the law that have been dealt with but there are actions of faith james said show me your faith without works and i will show you my faith by my works there are works that are actions attestations participatory actions that validate that you believe god very very important joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 
the bible says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth he says but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein he says thou mayest observe to do not just observe to know not just observe to speak confession is a very active part of faith but that's not all you must obtain grace to do there are many of us we may need to write the things that we will need to do as our participatory actions of obedience to prove to god that we believe him fully and then commit his integrity god is a god of integrity but his integrity is committed on our behalf at the point of obedience deuteronomy chapter 28 i'm rounding up deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if that's a condition thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god then to observe and next to do all not to do some not to do the one you like not to do the one convenient let me tell you this when you are obeying god you don't choose your conditions you don't choose your terms if god gives you an uh a, a, a challenges you for instance and say take a seed to your pastor and sow it into his life so that he will speak over your life to break this hold of delay for instance you must be careful to do all if god says be diligent a lazy man will beg in harvest you cannot just be praying and refuse to be productive and expect that god is going to bring things in your hand no you will have to trust god for grace to do all his commandments which i command thee this day he says as a result the lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and then verse 2 says these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if that's the condition thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god we're going to pray lord show me my role in birthing the possibility that you intend for me to have in this season show me my role we're praying please pray show me my role for some of you your role will need to be to go for training for some of you your your role will need to be investing knowledge for some of you your role will need to be to go and buy books that discuss your subject of concern for some of you your role will need to be humility for some of you your role will need to be to build character for some of you your role will need to be to spend more time with god's word for some of you your role will need to be to stay with scripture and build until you conform to the image of god for some of you your role will need to be to take risks for some of you your role will need to be to build relationships for some of you your role will need to be to spend more time in prayer for some of you your role will need to be wisdom to access wisdom for some of you your role <coughs> excuse me may need to be to go online and search for job opportunities for some of you your role will need to be to sit down with your wife and talk and build a great marriage for some of you your role will need to be to be more attentive to your children for some of you your role may need to be to love the body of christ for some of you your role may need to be to love god with all your heart pray from the depth of your heart what is my role oh god there has to be something that i need to do the rich man came to jesus and said good master what do i do to inherit eternal life now the next point we are going to pray nobody can fulfill the demands of faith in the strength of the flesh this is something we need to understand the bible says in romans chapter 8 from verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus powerful scripture who walk not not just who sit down there who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 2 says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death three 
it says for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh you see that now the flesh made the law weak he says god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh verse 4 and then the bible says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 5 he says for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit here's the point for to be carnally minded the word carnal there means sensual that means the limitation of your impulses is what you think what you hear what you see what you taste to be carnally minded will only lead you to death it says but to be spiritually minded is life and peace let me just pause here a bit and as we round up let me just encourage us believers we are in very sensitive times that require high level spirituality there are people who sit down and you know we hear all kinds of things from the media we hear all kinds of things from our relatives and our friends and you just put on the television and it's like everything is about war everything is about trouble it's like the whole world is packing up let me tell you this straight it is not the destruction of satan that will bring jesus back it is the glory and the dominion of the saints he is coming as the king of wicked god is not sitting on the throne scratching his head and wondering what to do no and the church is not becoming a powerless entity that is under the limitation and, and the vicissitudes of life the church is the bride of christ guarded by his own jealousy we are a victorious people but we must be careful what we 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 allow into the ear gate into the eye gate these are sensitive gates to our spirits the things you read the things you hear the company you keep it is very important culture your atmosphere remain at a level of spirituality that allows the holy spirit to be comfortable working with you there are pastors who believe that until certain things happen we cannot prosper there are businessmen who believe until certain things happen we cannot prosper that's not true god is still a maker he's making men making families making destinies restoring hope there are people who have been so blessed even during this pandemic there are people who have known god there are people who have increased i'd like you to exempt yourself through knowledge you must make up your mind in as much as we love the whole body of christ and we love the world we sympathize with the tragic things that have happened to people but do not allow what is happening in the world to suddenly destroy your conviction i know whom i have believed i may not know who you believe and what you believe but i know what i have believed so we are going to pray lord help me to be spiritual to be spiritual that my mind is governed by your word not the speakings left right bombarded here and there not let me not give satan room to dampen my faith let me not give satan room to destroy my convictions are we praying thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus now i'd like you to pray for new heritage baptist church pray for pastor great servant of god pray for his dear wife pray for his family we are at times where ministry is very challenging the devil is raising all kinds of onslaughts to make sure that the church becomes voiceless and and we have to pray pray for him pray for his wife pray for his family pray for the deaconry of the new heritage baptist church pray for the youth pray for every arm of the church we decree and declare that new heritage baptist church will only continue to go from glory to glory Pray for the wonderful mothers. Pray for those trusting God for healing. Pray for those trusting God for lifting. Pray for those trusting God for supernatural turnarounds. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. You have shared with us that it is possible to activate divine possibilities. And you have taught us again that results are not the reason why you desire us to seek you. You desire that much more than the things that you will do for us, that we will seek to know you because we truly love you. And Lord, we trust you and we, we say it again that we love you not because of tea and bread. We love you not because of the things that you give us. We love you for who you are. But Lord, we thank you that you are benevolent enough to not leave us without help. You are our helper and you are our maker. And thank you for showing us the systemic nature of your kingdom, that we can activate keys that 
upon engaging them will open us to a world of limitless possibilities you have taught us faith lord i pray that you bring us to a point of persuasion where we are convinced about your integrity where we are convinced about your ability open us oh god to the understanding illumination that will help us know the participatory roles that we have to play in actualizing prophecy and promises over our lives and lord we obtain grace grace that will help us to be diligent and to be persistent until your word speaks over our lives father i stretch my hands and i pray for new heritage baptist church and as many who are following and will be following in the name of jesus i pray that you will bless everyone i pray by the ministry of the spirit i bring you the ministry of the holy ghost i pray that the power of god will touch people that in homes in families who experience the grace of god i pray for breakthrough i pray for restoration those who have gone down and gone cold spiritually i pray in the name of jesus let there be an activation of a fresh love and fire for the things of god whatever is a distraction to your life and your spiritual experience i declare that god will cut it away from you in the name of jesus i pray that you will love the lord with all your heart i pray that you will hunger after the things of god and i pray for the leadership i pray for all families represented i pray for the youth everything you desire god to do in your life i release my faith with you and in the name of jesus i pray that you are having this experience as your heritage in the name of jesus the lord bless you the lord honor you in the name of jesus christ let me challenge you um please and please i want you to get relevant teachings that talk about the specific areas of concern let that be your responsibility find out by the spirit the relevant areas that talk about the issues of concern sit with the word of god meditate upon it until you come to a point of persuasion and you come to a point where your faith is alive then when you find your role obtain grace from god and do it do it with all your heart do it with patience and persistence and i assure you that in the name of jesus you will find out that you will step into a whole world a new world of supernatural possibilities may the lord bless you with his presence may the lord bless you with his word in jesus name i pray amen shalom